hello to everyone. It's it's so good to be here with the Sullivan Foundation again and speaking with all of you. And, and I am pumped to talk about how systems thinking translates to tangible change today, because these are concepts, tools, frameworks, and, and even words too that I did not know about in college. So it was great to see so many freshmen, sophomores, you know, people throughout different grades here in college who will get to learn about some of these key tools and, and some of this framework too, before you get out into the real world. And so a little bit about my background and how I got into this whole space is I, I have a very varied background of experience and I've worked with many different organizations. So I've, I've done everything from being a social entrepreneur to being a social entrepreneur, to being a CEO under 30, to being a city commissioner, to building bridges of innovation and entrepreneurship across countries around the world, and working with young leaders around, you know, across six different continents to help them build their entrepreneurial potential. And that's really been at the root of the work of what I've done. But all of, even though I have a, a bunch of experience with many different organizations, the key thread that, you know, crosses throughout everything is that my mission is to remove barrier barriers to equitable growth. And I think that the way to do that is by, you know, being invested and connected with, you know, across sectors, civil society, public and private. And so my background kind of lends itself to that as well. And what I want to talk with you about today is to do a little bit of a crash course on systems change and systems thinking. We have 20 minutes, so this is going to be fairly quick, but I just want to make sure that this is introduced to you so you have this skill set before you leave college. And what we're going to go through is a little overview of what systems change is and the terms. So we're all on the same page. We're going to talk about why systems change matters. And then we're going to go over the three R framework that can help you take action with systems change. And then an invitation to experiment with me and, and, and do some of this work alongside me as well. So when we talk about systems, what, what even are systems, what systems change, what is systems thinking? So the way that I think about it is that a system is anything organized for a purpose. So that's football, a sports game or school or work or society at large. So it's anything that has players, it has rules, and it's designed in a way to organize for a specific purpose. So that's what a system is when we talk about systems thinking and systems change. And then when we think about, well, what is systems thinking? So systems thinking is really a mindset. It's a way of seeing the world as interconnected and interdependent and, and focusing not just on the parts, but focusing on the whole piece of a system or an issue area that you want to affect or that you want to impact. And then when we think about systems change, systems change is very much a process and an outcome that addresses the root causes to social problems. And when I was in school, I studied social entrepreneurship and business. And this was something that I wish I would have um, thought about even more in those programs is in addition to creating a market-based solution or uh, a social venture and building a revenue model around it, how can we with our work, not just as an entrepreneur or not just as a, a business leader, but how can we think about addressing the root causes to social problems and applying a systems lens to everything that we do? And that's part of the reason why, you know, a couple years out of college, I got introduced to this concept and it's been really, really helpful in my work ever since across everything that I've done. And a really good way to think about systems change, a good model to look at is called the iceberg model. And this helps frame us and, and provide a tool and a little bit of a, a visual for how to think about systemic thinking. So there's four different elements to this in different layers. The first one is looking at the surface level. So, you know, what's happening out there with a particular issue or what's going on. And the example that I want to give for here would be a similar to catching a cold. So an event, what took place is, well, I just caught a cold. So that's kind of an example there. But we don't just want to focus on the surface level with any of these issues. We really want to get to what is the root of the problem and why does a system continue to perpetuate in a particular way? And so the next layer we look at is we look at patterns or trends. And the question we ask is what trends have been there over time? 
So why might I be catching a cold? Well, maybe I've been catching colds because I've been sleeping less. So that's one pattern that we can look at as to why, you know, I might be catching a cold. The next layer we look to after that when applying a systems thinking lens is we look at underlying structures. So what has influenced the patterns? So in, in what are some of the relationships between the parts? So what has influenced me catching a cold? So maybe I have stress at work um, or I'm not eating well or I've had difficulty accessing healthy food near home or work. Those are all different pieces that have influenced you know, me getting a cold. And then finally, kind of the last layer that we look at that's deeper into uh, the iceberg is the mental models. So what assumptions, beliefs, and values do people hold about the system? And what beliefs keep the system in place? And so one of the beliefs that might keep um, me continuing to get a cold is you know, that I think my career is the most important piece of our identity. Healthy food is too expensive and rest is for the unmotivated. Thankfully, this is changing given now that we're talking more about burnout and mental health, which is great, but perhaps that could be a mental model that underlies all of that. And systems thinking is important to really diagnose why an issue such as catching a cold, you know, kind of what's going under on underneath the surface because it allows us to understand what sorts of interventions to introduce. For example, if I was catching a cold, often I could take Dayquil or Nightquil, or I could take you know, some over-the-counter medicine to help me alleviate the symptoms of the cold. But at the end of the day, if I'm not sleeping well, if I'm not eating well, if I'm not taking care of my body and having a better balance, then I'm gonna keep catching colds. And I can take as much Dayquil or Nightquil as I want, but it's not gonna solve the underlying problem of me not having healthy habits. So this is why systems thinking is so important for all of the issues that everyone was raising before, because it helps us get to the root cause of why something's going on and happening. And many organizations are using systems thinking and systems change as one tool of the many to help drive their organizations and have a, a large outsized impact. So systems thinking is often used in tandem and alongside building a programmatic strategy. So identifying what are the steps that we need to take to get to a particular goal, as well as human-centered design that some of you may or may not have heard of before. That's all about how do we put people at the center of our work and with anything that we're designing. And if you also include systems thinking, that's just another tool that you can use to assess, okay, you know, let's take a step back. Let's understand what's happening with this larger issue and where, what's the root cause to the social problem? Where is all this stemming from? Let's not just look at the surface level, but let's look deeper and understand how can I as a person and our organization really affect larger change by identifying the different leverage points. And to go back before, the, the deeper you get into the iceberg, the increasing leverage points there are for you to really push on the system and change it and redesign it in different ways. So why does this matter? We've talked a little bit about what systems thinking is and also you know, shared a little bit of a framework of, of how to think about it, but why does this matter and especially now? This matters so much because today's complex problems require a systems thinking mindset. And a systems thinking mindset, how I kind of define it and look at it, is a focus on co-creation. So working with others, recognizing that you are a part of a larger system of people who are working to address the social cause over heropreneurship, which um, is thinking where you, you know, people think that there's only one person who can solve an issue or one entrepreneur who can do something. And so we really need to focus on, we're all in this together to affect systems change. We need all of us. The other piece is, you know, this requires thoughtful action. That's really needed when we solve some of the complex problems that we have today. And we need to think and do, not just focus on taking action, but thoughtful action. This is also important because we need to address root cause interventions versus just su surface level solutions, kind of like what I talked about before with Dayquil and Nyquil. I'll still continue to get a cold, even if I take those medicine, because we're not solving the root cause of why I keep getting a cold. And then the last two are really employing a holistic approach to addressing complex problems, working across public, private, civil society sectors, instead of just focusing on market-based 
responses. Building a company, being a social entrepreneur, that's one piece of many things that we need to do to affect systems change. And so it's really important as leaders that we think about this very broadly and comprehensively. And then finally, we also need a long-term vision when we're thinking about these complex problems because systemic gaps are usually long-standing. They've been here for a really long time. And so when we think about changing them and building a systems thinking mindset, we need to have that long-term vision versus thinking, you know, how can we solve this problem within a couple of years? We need to recognize that this problem has been long-standing for a while. We need to figure out what's our piece to make the change so we'll live in a better world moving forward. And as I do this work, what I really anchor myself to is how can we all be good ancestors? And I wanna focus on this because how we design the world today will impact the lives of 3.5 billion people born in the next 100 years. So if we really think far out and have a long-term vision, all of us who are here now, we are designing, impacting, creating the world that 3.5 billion people will live in in the next 100 years. And this is estimated from what the United Nations has studied and predicted in terms of population growth. But when you think about that, you really got to think about how can we be good ancestors and apply a systems lens to all of our work? Because how we show up each day, how we you know, work in the companies that we're a part of, or you know, what we build while we're in school, all that impacts the world that's being created for the people who are coming after us. And so all of this is, is you know, really to anchor us towards why systems thinking is important for us to have this outsized impact. So as we've gone through kind of all of those pieces, talking about what systems change is, and also some tools and frameworks for it and why this is important. I also wanna introduce um, something else as well, which is called the 3R framework. And this is a model that I use all the time when I'm doing systems change work. And I've done this recently when thinking about how we can change the Texas power grid, given you know the winter storm that we had here in, in Texas not long ago, and we're still struggling and, and, and managing through that. But I apply this methodology with that, as well as in a project that I worked on last year around broadband access to different areas of the country and thinking about how do we close the divide between digital access. And I use this in my other work as well. So I hope that this is something you can take with you too when you're trying to build systems change. This framework comes from an uh, initiative called Reimagine Society, which is the action tank for systems change. And I'm one of the co-founders for that. And we built that back in March, 2020, when the pandemic really you know, was at the onset. And we led many dialogues around systems change with young leaders around the world to figure out how do we identify the gaps, opportunities, and next steps to really affect change um, and get to the root causes of some of these bigger social problems. And the first step that we focus on is reflecting. These system gaps have been here for a long time and there's been many people who have really tried to um, address them in many different ways. So the first thing is to reflect and understand and examine what are the systemic gaps, what's been done before, and, and understand who are the key players in this particular issue area that you're interested in and really absorb and understand what's been done before. So you can identify, well, where might there be a gap where you can help and have the most impact? The second phase of this is reimagine. So this is the, the second th in the three R framework. And reimagine is to dialogue with key stakeholders. So you want to reimagine not alone. Remember we said we want co-creation first and foremost when we're thinking about systems thinking. And so you want to reimagine what the world could be with people who are living the issue, with people who are currently working on the issue. So for instance, with you know thinking about the Texas power grid and thinking about how we can utilize systems thinking to address many of the problems that came up during the winter storm, you can't just focus on yourself. You also need to focus on, well, who were the people in Texas who did not have power, did not have water, did not have access to key services that they needed? Who are the policymakers who are in charge of, you know, running some of those systems? What power companies and, you know, different energy companies that are involved with, you know, giving us all power and giving us all energy? 
and just recognizing those different stakeholders because when you do that, you learn a lot and you understand more about what pieces of the issue are already being solved and what ones that you really need to focus on even more. And then finally, you want to reshape. This is the third R in the framework and it's to take small steps, adjust and repeat. So reshaping is really about, let's start redesigning the system and figuring out what we wanna do next. And, and you wanna take small steps, adjust along the way and kind of repeat the process as you go. And I hope this framework will be useful in the work that you do. This has been kind of the, the easiest framework for uh, me to break down with Reimagine Society. So when we see more system gaps that come up, we have a thought process to go through to start understanding, you know, where we can take our first step and, and what we need to learn more. And now that I've gone through the framework a little bit more, we have a few minutes left here and I want to invite you to take part in learning and practicing systems change with me. And a way that you can do this is through an initiative that I worked on building with the World Economic Forum called the Davos Lab, Building Our Future. And this is the world's first grassroots and youth-driven effort to build a post-pandemic recovery plan with all interested citizens across 150 countries. This initiative is driven by the Global Shapers community and is also powered by the World Economic Forum. And this was born out of you know, all the crises that we face, not only with the pandemic, but many others over the past year. And to really focus on how do we engage everyone in the design process so we can leave this world better off for the people who come after us. And with this initiative, we are committed to driving systems change across 10 different impact areas from everything from inclusive jobs to digital access and literacy, public health, net zero and climate change, the future of politics. And right now we're focused on a 10 week campaign of dialogues that are happening around the world to really work with key stakeholders around these different issue areas and understand where are the systemic gaps, where can we move the needle, what are the leverage points that we can push on even more to solve some of the root causes to these larger issues. And I would love to work with you on this if this is something that's interesting to you. And we have many toolkits um, and frameworks and different things that we can share to help you on your way to, to go into these dialogues even more. So with that, I would love to play jazz with you. I'd love to improvise, learn along the way, and start practicing systems change with all of you. If you'd like to get in touch, you have my LinkedIn, my Instagram, my Twitter. I usually respond much better via those than email, but it would be such an honor to work with you, hear about the issues you're jamming on right now, and see how we can apply systems change to that and the systems lens to your work. And I, I just really appreciate you all being here and, and investing this time to learn about this topic because I wish this is something I would have had when, you know, before I graduated college.